here's something I picked up the other day a 1965 Admiral portable solid state record player now looking at this model you would think it's a stereo unit but you'd be wrong it's actually a mono record player with the left and right speakers wired in parallel has controls for tone and volume and here's the record changer this is an Admiral Enzyme record changer has speeds of 16, 33, 45, 78 in a neutral position now when I got this it sort of worked but the original 3 volt Varco cartridge was very weak and you had to turn the volume all the way up to hear anything and I checked on the Voice of Music's website and they didn't have the cartridge listed but it always pays to ask because Gary just happened to happened to have a new old stock cartridge in stock for this now well, I'll show you where we are at this point removing the original cartridge was kind of a pain in the butt because I had to remove this decorative piece that conceals the screw that holds the original cartridge in place and the way things normally work when something's glued on if it's something that's not supposed to come off it'll fall off on you but if you're trying to get it off it'll be stuck like Chuck so let's give this a spin and I'll show you where we are at this stage of the game and the tone arm set down needs to be adjusted Sounds pretty good for a cheaper model. Which one would you choose, my brothers? If there was no day or night, which would you prefer to be right? One thing about these cheaper record players that use the lower compliance high output cartridges, they don't do very well with newer records, say from the late 70s on up, they tend to skip. And the only way to get around that is to install a more modern compliant pickup cartridge. But unfortunately, no modern cartridge kicks out three volts. So uh, if I were to install a one volt cartridge, the volume would be significantly lower and just to see what happens we'll try this out with a newer record from the 80s that I happen to know plays just fine on a on a higher end turntable and yeah this mechanism needs to be cleaned as you can hear it's skipping all over the place Yeah, this record player will likely be reserved for playing older records. Now let's open the hood and have a look at the inside. And here's the amplifier, about as bare bones as it gets. A two transistor amp. And judging by the way the chassis looks, it looks like they use the, the chassis that would have normally been used for the stereo amp version judging by all the wasted space that's there and you can see there's the traditional orange cardboard tube multi-section electrolytic capacitor that I'm surprised is it's in as good a shape as it is and there's your audio output transformer the amplifier gets its power directly from the 120 volt line uses high voltage on the audio output stage in a dropping resistor to lower the voltage for the little preamp stage 
This amp most likely uses germanium transistors, which we'll find out for sure in a minute. But I do want to go ahead and replace this orange multi-section cap. I'm detecting a little bit of background hum that's only going to get worse over time, so might as well go ahead and get rid of it. And here's the amplifier. You can see in greater detail how minimal this is. And nothing on the under underside of the circuit board. Look at all that wasted space. And surprisingly, these transistors are silicon transistors, which amazes me. The filter capacitor is your standard 50 microfarad, 30 microfarad, and 150 volts, just like what you'd find in a tube set. Here's the multi-section filter cap. The 50 microfarad section is reading about half what it should read. And as you can see, the 30 microfarad section is also much lower than it should be. So yeah, we need to replace this. And here's the amp, all serviced and ready to go. I've replaced the electrolytic filter capacitors as well as the across-the-line cap. And I was able to attach the capacitors directly to the circuit board via use of unused holes that our terminals on the circuit board that had a return path to ground. I also cleaned the uh, volume and tone pots with uh, control cleaner. So this amplifier is ready to be reinstalled and, and we can move on to the record changer portion. Okay, it's all back together and I'll have to confess I had a little off-camera tirade getting it back together because the uh, nuts that hold the amplifier in place just would not lock on to the threads on the control shafts. After finally playing around with them for 30 minutes, I finally got them back on. It seems, I don't know what it is, sometimes the things that should be the simplest end up being the hardest. But anyway, it's back together and the amplifier and cartridge is working to full capacity again. And in the next video, well, maybe several days away, but I'll make a video on the record changer restoration. I need to order some phono lube and some more supplies, so there's really no need me doing anything to the record changer until I get those supplies in here. But we'll give it one last little test run to show you where we are up to this point. 45 RPM record. Nice 78 RPM record. is in that new cartridge even though it's new old stock a lot of times the suspension will become hard and now 33 As you can hear, it's skipping badly, so I just may have to just use a modern production one volt cartridge and live with low output. Okay, thanks for watching. More to come later.